right. Good morning, First Church. It's so good to be here with you this morning. My name is Chris Britton, and I'm the executive director of New Heights CCDA, uh, which is a nonprofit uh, that was founded by First Church to help move people from scarcity to stability to success while empowering each with the love of Jesus. And I'd like to thank Pastor David for entrusting me with the opportunity to preach to you all this Sunday. Now, one of the things that first attracted Amanda, my wife, and I here was actually it was how outwardly focused this church is. You see, we're a church that believes in not only proclaiming the gospel uh, in, in word, but we also believe strongly that we must proclaim the gospel in deed as well. In fact, this church's involvement in missions has dramatically shaped my life. My wife and I were newly married, and we had just moved to the area. And like most newlyweds, we decided that we needed to get a dog, right? We had to make sure that, if, hey, if we can keep this dog alive, maybe someday we can have kids. Apparently, we thought we'd do a really good job because now we have four kids. Uh, I'm not sure we were ready for that, but that's okay. Uh, and, and it just so happened that First Church was hosting a dog wash and a dog adoption in the parking lot as a community outreach event. Uh, and as such, we got plugged into First Church, and then we were invited to help plan the very first Do Something event. Was there anybody here who's at that very first Do Something event? All right, yeah. Uh, that was a catalytic moment in the life of our church. I, for me, that seemed like it was kind of this tipping point where we really took this next big step forward in being this outwardly focused church. Now, if you're not familiar with Do Something, it's an event that First Church regularly hosts where in lieu of a Sunday morning service, the entire congregation, all thousand of us from across all of our campuses, go out and serve in the community. And so then Amanda and I were invited to go on our a First Church missions trip to Haiti. And let me tell you, it was there in Haiti that God really rocked my world. So much so that my wife and I then quit our jobs and embarked on a year-long mission trip that took us to over 11 countries in 11 months. And then after that trip, uh, I left my career in education and joined the First Church staff as missions, missions director. And then it was during my time as missions director that New Heights was formed, which now leads us to today. The ethos of this church and its desire to live out the gospel has clearly impacted me and certainly changed my life. Now today is one of my favorite Sundays at First Church, Faith Promise Sunday, which means I get to share with you about all the great work that is being accomplished through the collective generosity of First Church. In the book of Romans, chapters 10, verses 14 and 15, the Apostle Paul eloquently articulates the essence of our mission as Christians. He writes, How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. So these verses encapsulate the essence of our calling, which is to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to all corners of the earth. Or to paraphrase Acts 1.8, we're to share the good news of the gospel in word and deed to St. Joseph, to Southwest Michigan, to the United States, and to the far corners of the world. I have to remind you, and I have to remind myself this, we're not trying to sell Amway here right? We're selling the life-transforming, freedom-giving, joy-bringing love of God. Matthew 7, 15 through 20 says, beware of false prophets who come to join you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, 
you will recognize them by their fruits. All right, there's certainly a lot that could be unpacked from this passage. In fact, you could easily preach a whole sermon series just on this passage alone. But just for today, I want to draw out one aspect. People will know and understand the transformative, over-the-top love of God by our deeds, by our fruit. It's not simply enough for us to preach or proclaim the gospel. We must also demonstrate it through our actions. And as Pastor David so often says, we are a both and church. We proclaim the gospel both in word and deed. And as a both and church, we support missions work both domestically and internationally. The work of First Church is extensive, and there's no way to cover it all in a sermon of reasonable length. So, just let me put this caveat out there. If you're impressed by just the little snippet that you're about to hear today, I want you to take that, I want you to multiply it by 100, and then you'll have an idea of the true scope of this church's overall impact. So let's dive in. Let's start with our local missions partners, and you can follow along with the handouts that you've received. It should look like this. If you don't have one, uh, go ahead and raise your hand and uh, the ushers will get you one or look next to you in your aisle. Uh, You should be able to find one there. Also, just just a heads up, later on, we're going to be talking about making a faith promise commitment to support missions. So while I preach, I want you to be prayerfully considering what God might be prompting you, how he might be prompting you to participate in faith promise. So one of our newest local missions partners is Carol's Hope, a beacon of hope for individuals battling addiction and co-occurring disorders in our community. Through their 24-hour crisis intervention facility, lives are being saved, restored, and transformed. We've witnessed firsthand the impact of their work, and today we get to celebrate their dedication to healing and restoration. So real quick, let's check out this video testimony of a client that has been served through Carol's Hope. My kids were taken away from me January 25th of 2019, and when that happened, I just went crazy. I didn't want help, and then I finally got tired of digging a hole deeper and deeper, and I tried to take my life. I mean, when I came in here, I was in pretty much a fog. Like, I can't remember a lot, but I do remember feeling very welcomed and not, they weren't judgmental at all, you know? And that's what I was scared of. I was really scared to be judged. That's why I didn't want to get help before. I kept thinking I could just do it on my own. And then when I came here, I found out that, you know, there's more people out there who have been through the same thing that I've been through. Uh, My overall experience working with them has been amazing. Um, I'm very close to the recovery coaches here. I'm 13 months clean and I am on my own. I got my kids back from CPS after 22 months. In the depths of active addiction, there's no hope. I brought my daughter here a few weeks ago when my daughter reached out to me and said, Dad, I'm ready. This is the absolute first phone call that I made. It was right here to Carol's Hope. Uh, They made phone calls, they made arrangements, they covered all bases for her and got her lined up with a treatment center. It's a wonderful place. I'm really glad that it exists. Carol's Hope is is a godsend. So to see a person restored the way Amy is being restored and to see children reunited with their mother is absolutely priceless. If that's not restoring God's ideal, I have no idea what is. But as you saw, it's not just the clients who benefit. For the family members, parents, and friends of those struggling with addiction, for them to have a place they can call and take their loved one is just as priceless. So like I said, there's so many great life-changing stories coming out of Carol's Hope. And just so you know, some of those stories and testimonies involve some of our own First Church family members who get help and the fresh start they need at Carol's Hope. Carol's Hope helps to save restore, and transform lives. And First Church is all about that. Another, uh, a long-standing local missions partner of First Church is Mosaic CCDA. Mosaic empowers people to overcome poverty by becoming agents of change that transform their community. 
I personally love the work of Mosaic, and I actually get to work with them very closely through my job at New Heights. New Heights and Mosaic are very close partners. I even have the privilege of serving on their board of directors. And one of my favorite programs at Mosaic, which Faith Promise helps support, is Jobs for Life. Jobs for Life provides coaching to participants in order to help them find and retain meaningful work. Exciting developments are underway at Mosaic, including the renovation of the Mosaic resale store into the Mosaic Transformation Center. This center will feature a coffee shop and serve as a hub for partner agencies, which will create a convenient one-stop destination for individuals in need to access holistic wraparound services. Now, moving on to talk about our third local missions partner that we're going to highlight today, New Heights. It's remarkable to think that New Heights, our very own nonprofit dedicated to addressing the physical needs of individuals in our community while sharing the gospel, has reached its seventh year. 2023 was filled with excitement, and we anticipate even greater things in 2024. Last year marked the groundbreaking for the Laundry Hub, and we eagerly await its opening later this spring. The Laundry Hub is poised to become a vital community center in Benton Heights, providing facility space for partner agencies to deliver essential services. The Laundry Hub will create a pipeline for those partner agencies to deliver their much-needed services direct to an often neglected community. The community's enthusiasm for this new ministry is palpable. I'm asked multiple times a week about when's it going to open? I'm also regularly fielding calls from social and human service agencies wanting to deliver services through the Laundry Hub. You see, these agencies have been wanting to provide services directly to Benton Heights for years, but until the advent of the Laundry Hub did not have the practical facility space to do it. The New Heights Auto Ministry performed over 250 repairs for individuals striving to secure or retain employment with the total value of these repairs amounting to $250,000. Additionally, more than 10 vehicles were restored and provided to those in need. So while I was preparing for this sermon, I looked back at my sermon notes from the last time I preached during Faith Promise Sunday. It was 2019, which makes me kind of wonder, okay, it's 2024, uh, maybe it wasn't so great, so hopefully this one will be better, or maybe you'll be seeing me in five years again, I don't know. Hopefully, it'll be shorter than that. Uh, But back in 2019, you know what I found in my notes, what we were celebrating? We were celebrating the fact that we had assisted 25 people through the CARS ministry. And I just told you that this last year alone, regularly for the last three years, we have helped 250 people annually. That tremendous growth and impact can be tied directly to faith promise. One particularly inspiring story is that of Lexi, who's actually a member of First Church. Lexi is a single mother. She received a van generously donated by another member of our congregation. And this van has not only provided her with safe and reliable transportation for her most precious cargo, her children, but also significantly enhanced her employment prospects. Lexi is now actually able to work two jobs And her financial situation has improved dramatically, which has brought greater stability to her family. As an aside, did you know that you can also support the New Heights Auto Ministry by having your vehicle serviced at New Heights Auto Services? When you bring your vehicle to New Heights Auto Services, you'll pay market rate. But the difference between us and Midas is that the proceeds from the work you have done will be used to help people like Lexi. You know, one time I had somebody come up to me after a service. It wasn't here. I was preaching at another church promoting New Heights, and they said, uh, oh, my neighbor told me I should have my car worked on at New Heights Auto Services. And I said, oh, well, why didn't you? She said, well, I didn't want to take away from somebody in need. Now, I gave her a polite response and explained it, but the, the heart of my response was this. By not having your car serviced at New Heights Auto Services, you actually did take away from somebody in need. Because the way we structure our calendar, our schedule over there, we actually keep the two separate. And when you bring your car to have it worked on, you're actually providing the funds needed that we need to go and help someone like Lexi. So again, we would love to help you take care of your vehicle and help somebody else in need at the same time. Now, let's transition from Faith Promise's local impact to its 
international impact. So you can continue to follow along on the other side of your handout. Now, we support a ministry in Asia that is under such severe persecution that if I were to mention their name online, this service is being streamed, it would put them in danger. So I'm going to speak in generalities here to protect them. We currently support eight pastors in their efforts to plant churches in rural villages. These pastors risk their lives every day to bring the gospel to people who might never hear it otherwise. And let me tell you, we get regular stories and updates about what these pastors are experiencing. Lives are being transformed. Addictions are being broken. Marriages are being restored in these villages. And actually, many people are experiencing physical healings. And this is all because of the work of these eight pastors that are being supported directly to your faith promise giving. The stories from this particular ministry are nothing short of amazing. And we are all a part of supporting this amazing work as we give to Faith Promise. Moving on to Malawi, we built the Malawi Ministry Center in 2012 and went back a year ago to add a dormitory. Now, when people come from all over the country for trainings, they have a place to stay. This critical investment infrastructure has greatly enhanced the work of the church in Malawi. Hundreds of pastors and leaders have been trained through the ministry center. And as a result of the trainings held at the ministry center, six new churches have been planted in the last three months alone. Six new churches planted in three months. And let me remind you, these churches aren't just for spiritual growth. That is important. But they're also being utilized as community centers, bringing hope and restoration to the communities where they are planted. And in Paraguay, we've witnessed the impact of our investments in church planning and leadership development as well. Your support of Faith Promise provides scholarships for 20 Paraguayan church leaders each year. After, complete, uh, after completion of the training that we scholarship, these leaders engage in ministries all across the country of Paraguay. And as a result, again, lives are being transformed. And another way we support Paraguay is by helping build churches, which I should mention are used much like First Church facilities. They're not only utilized for Sunday services, but also midweek programming, marriage counseling, youth groups, and community gatherings. So as we just take a minute and step back, again, like I said, I, we can't, I can't even begin to touch all the things that are on this sheet. And I, and I can tell you this too, the scope of faith promise and missions work, this handout doesn't even scratch the surface. But as we reflect on the work of just a few of our missions partners, let's remember that we all have a part to play in fulfilling the Great Commission. As I mentioned, we call today Faith Promise Sunday. The meaning of the term Faith Promise may not be very clear to you. It's a legacy term of First Church. Those of you who have been around First Church quite some time are probably very familiar with the term, but there might be some of you here uh, who aren't. So what is Faith Promise? So Faith Promise, simply put, is this. It's money we promise to give in support of missions by faith. Giving to faith promise can come in three ways. It's money that is intentionally retained, money that is surprisingly regained, or money that is unusually attained. So what you commit to faith promise should stem from a conversation you have with God about the commitment he wants you to make. Our scripture today, Romans 10, verses 14 through 15, serves as a powerful reminder of the significance of spreading the good news of Jesus Christ, who offers forgiveness for sins, freedom from anger, freedom from addiction, freedom from fear, and offers us eternal life. The passage poses three thought-provoking questions. How can an individual believe in Jesus if they've never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless somebody shares the message? Furthermore, how can anyone embark on this mission without being sent. And so this is where faith promise comes into play. We make a promise to God anchored in faith. And honestly, this is where the adventure truly begins. Faith promise entails dedicating money to missions with unwavering faith. While we may not always know where the funds are going to come from, we approach it with faith and trust in God's provision. So here's some practical ways we could approach faith promise. 
Consider making small adjustments, like reducing spending on non-essentials. For instance, maybe don't go through the McDonald's, only go through the McDonald's drive-through twice in a week rather than three times. You can accumulate significant funds, the money you save by changing those habits. You can accumulate funds to give to missions. Imagine if across all of our campuses, numerous people made that same commitment. In the course of a year, thousands of dollars would be redirected to mission causes and hundreds of pounds would be lost. That's a win-win. Sometimes unexpected blessings can come our way, such as a friend covering the cost of a meal. You know, we're, we were planning to go out to eat and uh, the person we went out to eat with, we, we budgeted that money in and the person we went out to eat with paid for our meal. Or we're entering tax season, everyone's favorite time of year. And uh, maybe there's an unexpected tax return. These moments provide an opportunity to acknowledge God's provision by redirecting those funds towards missions. By noticing how money we once intended to spend is either saved or refunded to us, it helps us to see the creative ways that we can support the mission of the gospel. Unusually attained money could be an unexpected check in the mail or an unforeseen increase in income. These instances allow us to express gratitude to God and joyfully allocate those resources towards faith promise missions. So in embracing faith promise, we step into a journey of faith and obedience, trusting that God will multiply our offerings to advance his kingdom and spread the message of hope to the ends of the earth. In addition to making a financial commitment, you may also want to consider a commitment of your time. We have a trip March 22nd through 29th to assist the Pass Creek Church of God congregation in South Dakota in their ministry to the Lakota people. In January of 2025, we have the opportunity for you to travel to Paraguay and witness the years of investment that this congregation has made in the country, as well as provide practical help to the ministry that's already happening there. And lastly, in, in my biased opinion, of course, most exciting, we'll be recruiting volunteers for help at the New Heights Laundry Hub, which will be opening in the next few months. If you're interested in any of these opportunities, please visit the Info Hub immediately following the service. Now, I'd like to draw your attention back to the Faith Promise handout. So like I mentioned, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to fill out the commitment card attached to the handout, which can be found here at the bottom. So if you need a pen, feel free to raise your hand and one of the ushers will bring one to you. Also, we have a virtual Faith Promise card, which you can get to by scanning the QR code. But before you do that, notice all the ways that our church is making a real and tangible impact, both locally and globally. Our goal this year is to raise $160,000 in order to keep investing in all these transformative ministries, both locally and globally. Now, I should also mention that in addition to Faith Promise, First Church allocates 10% of all weekly offerings towards missions. So annually, that's another $280,000 towards missions, making the total annual contribution that First Church makes in its outward focus $440,000. So let's continue to share the gospel indeed by helping more Lexis with transportation. And let's continue to share the gospel in word through the equipping of leaders in Paraguay. Remember, we're a both and church. We share the gospel both domestically and, and globally. We share the gospel both in word and deed. Now on your handout, you'll notice at the bottom there is a perforated portion which you can tear off. The left side of that is the commitment card. That's the larger side. The smaller side is a part for your own personal records where you can see, remind yourself of what you've committed, but then you can also keep, keep a log of maybe the money that's come in, the, the unexpected faith promise money that you find. Now, you might be asking yourself the question, why, why do I need to fill out a card? Why don't I just give as God provides? So I'm going to give you two reasons, the first being most important. The reason for the commitment card is that by completing it, we're challenging you to listen to God and step out in faith. By establishing a commitment, you're able to see how God provides for the commitment he's asked you to make. You're giving God the opportunity to wow you with his power. The secondary reason 
is we ask for your commitment card, is it helps us establish a faith promise budget. Based on the commitment cards that come in, we make a pledge then to our various mission partners. And again, this creates the opportunity for us and our partners to see how God's going to provide. So while the worship team plays, take a moment and prayerfully consider what God may be asking you to commit in faith to support this work. Then fill out your commitment card. Then fill out the portion of the card that stays with you. you, and you it's not perforated, but you can easily tear it off by folding it, putting a crease in it, and then tearing. It should tear pretty easily then. When the song is finished, you can pass the cards towards the aisle, and the ushers will be there to collect it. Now listen, let's just be real. I understand this, this could be a little scary, right? Uh, it's scary for me too. I'm about as type A as they come. I love to plan, love to think ahead. Why can't I just budget this money in? That is an approach, but I'm not going to lie to you. That's not as much fun because by doing the faith promise portion of it, you're going to have the opportunity to see how God is going to provide the funding that you need to, com- to make this commitment that he's laid on your heart. So not only will this exercise of faith pay eternal dividends through the work we're able to do together, it will also be a blessing to you as you see how God provides for you to meet the commitment he's laid on your heart.